with us throughout this day. It's been a long day, it's a long journey. Some places we overheated and I'm glad to report that nobody took a dip in the pool. I was concerned about that to cool off because you know we would do that. But thank you all. This has been a momentous day for us. It's our legacy day, it's our celebration. The board made it all possible. Please thank our board. It's just not possible without them. The insight, the foresight, the understanding, the significance of having facilities that will enable students to truly be prepared when they leave us and go into the world of work. What our board has teed up, not only at St. Philip's College, as I said today is take two, because we were at Northeast Lake yesterday. Is Mary Dennison still with us? Because she stuck with us forever and ever. I think she left. <laughs> she did. But I, I, they understood that now our students are leaving, having been exposed to resources, equipment, materials that are even more advanced than the places that they're going to work. It makes a huge, huge difference in their marketing, their capacity, and capability. And we can push them out in middle income America immediately. So a very special thank you. And there was somebody else that told me that they were here. I'm supposed to introduce you and I'm trying to remember. So help me out. <laughs> oh, Mr. Coleman, Mr. Coleman, John Coleman, one of the artists, our artists here for the artwork. John Coleman, thank you. As you can see, in our community, in the Sutton Building, we have all of the artwork donated to us by Lila Cockrell. And when she gave us her artwork, Five of the artists attended St. Philip's College and John Coleman, nationally renowned. And then I have to do this, you know, I had only one child, a son, and he got married in March. And so now I have a child, a son, and a daughter. But my daughter's mother, Miss Merchant, is now here. As well. So with that, here we go. Let's talk about what's in this $30 million building that the board made possible. $30 million building. Plus, and counting. Plus, yes. and yeah. counting. Uh, uh, we cannot thank y'all enough for the support we received. Uh, just to give you a perspective, we went from a single story building with three kitchens that were being rotated nonstop from 8 o'clock in the morning to 10 o'clock at night and our enrollment at the time was right about 300. Now we have four stories. Uh, we have now two restaurants, uh, two student-run restaurants, which is really great, because now the students are getting exposed to it. And for the public and our community, that means we can offer more services and uh, students get to practice industry, the uh, real live industry experience doing that. Uh, just some little things you'll see in the, the reel that's going up on top, you'll see that we have the state of our equipment. Uh, when we first got approached about the project and the CIP support we got, uh, again, thank y'all very much for that. Uh, we went uh, and realized that we had three crits in the kitchen, so us being the stewards of the public, we thought, okay, well, it dawned on me in the middle of the night, so, wait a minute, I got enough equipment for three kitchens, I have seven. What am I supposed to do? Uh, reach out to Dr. Lawson, at which point we were informed that we needed a wish list of all the equipment we get in. So uh, two days later, after talking to the faculty, uh, we were able to submit our proposal. And thanks to uh, some Title III funding, special funding that was available, we were able to buy $500,000 worth of support equipment for the class. So thank you for that. So, just to give you an idea, in our peak days, we pre-COVID, our uh, maximum enrollment was uh, right at 700. Uh, of course, COVID hit us. Uh, we were riding right about 200, 250. I am so happy to report that for the fall semester, this is our first time coming back 100% for all the programs. In my culinary, we never stopped because our cutting body, so we were here during COVID. Uh, if, just to give you perspective, those of us that remember wearing the mask, my students had the double mask and a face shield, plus the hat, uniform, and the kitchen, uh, and they were here. They, they toughed it through. Uh, some of us are better insulated than others. <laughs> Uh, so that was a little rough, uh, but it was a great a great time. Uh, you can see the students there in the face shields. Uh, we didn't skip a beat. Uh, our administration supported us. We were able to split the classes in half, uh, social distancing, and they supported the faculty and allowed us to not skip a beat. So our students did graduate. Uh, so right now, preliminary, again, we don't have the official numbers. I am so excited to report that 
I am currently sitting at about 500 students <laughs> so far. Plus I have uh, 30 sections of dual credit high school programs that are also going to be teachers. And just figuring on an average of, a small average of 10 each, that's another 300 students that will be counted or so. So we're uh, really excited uh, to see that. What that means for us is probably the spring semester we'll be back to what we were pre-COVID, running more offerings. My goal is uh, the charge that I've given myself, thanks to all the support you have, is to get my enrollment to 1,000, uh, tripling what I used to do. And uh, we are working here at the the THCA to become the center of all things hospitality for the city, the community, and the state, and nationally. So I have to brag a little bit my pro about my program. We are an American Culinary Federation uh, exemplary program. Uh, we've been, uh, we just went through our rear, rear, uh, accreditation commission and through Dr. Dr. Lawson's support and everything else. Um, excited to report that we were reaccredited as a temporary program for our fourth time which means we're going to enjoy 28 years of the temporary program uh, uh, and then our uh, hotel and hospitality programs are accredited by the uh, ACFA commission uh, they're also up and we got renewed on that so our students come out with some excellent credentials and definitely industry experience and uh, real world if you will uh, and another breaking point, there are other schools in the city board and the chairman of my advisory board, uh, Chef Johnny Hernandez, you might know him, he's got a couple places around. Um, uh, it's really recommended that this is what we needed. Uh, it's cutting edge, if you will. Uh, so uh, I will share with you that uh, it's a non-traditional color for the seats. We were St. Philip's blue, but uh, our benefactor uh, that's uh, dear and dear to me, it was my first job in high school. Uh, and that family, I won't say the family, but the, the arms should remind you about that. Uh, the Dobson family, the, the Thresh Grace, uh, they were really, gave a nice, I don't know if we were allowed to share the amount. Uh, well, for a good while there, we weren't sharing that, but $1 million in support of our students wow. and our program. And uh, actually, we still have some uh, updates coming in here. Our wish list got better, so what, what can we do? So we're going to eventually get to where we can stream out of here. Uh, part of what uh, this teaching table is we have uh, chefs coming in uh, we will be using this room uh, just to give you an idea on uh, September 9th uh, working with the city the city of San Antonio and UNESCO uh, being a, a gastronomy city of gastronomy we have three Korean chefs coming in to interact with our students and we'll be streaming that out and uh, providing an opportunity for others to see what we do in San Antonio so we're really excited about that And uh, as I always say, none of this would have been possible without the great support of our grand champion, Dr. Lawson. So I always take the opportunity to thank her. Uh, her leadership and support that uh, we went from our little EV program to where we are now. Uh, and I can share with you the evaluating board, the evaluators who came in from the ACF, went back to the national office and said that we were the Harvard of culinary students. Uh, Because everyone refers to the CIA as the Harvard of Culinary Schools, if, if you know that. So uh, they, they did say that uh, they were going to show us as a national model on how to do it right. So well, we're proud of that one. Also. Uh, that I can brag on. <laughs> uh, you'll see. So we still got some upgrades. Uh, love to show our refrigerator. Oh, wow. Uh, so, so how many of you watch uh, Elders Eats? Oh, wow. All right, all right. So you see that? Well. They reached out anonymously, trying to see if anybody had this capability. We didn't at the time, so it went to the other school, but uh, we're letting them know, hey, we're here, we can do whatever they had, and we do it better. So, uh, you'll hopefully see us around more than that. Uh, we're really excited about uh, the capabilities of this room. Uh, this cooktop could be here for a demo, but if we have a lecture, it can be taken out and stored and just become a 100% classroom. Uh, we have a fully operational top of the line oven that has all the capabilities and uh, this unit has a storage compartment so if you will uh, those of you watch the any type of live presentation on TV yeah. we always do the hey through the magic of TV and you can pull out a donut <laughs> so, <laughs> so they'll get real That's world great. experience on that um, the other thing is uh, in the old building I had to rotate through my programs uh, for instance we would start with the first year students in the lab from eight to two the basic skills kitchen there's actually five 
14 stations like we had in the old kitchen. So I tell everybody you actually have 11 kitchens if you're comparing it to what I had back in the other one. So uh, that class is now running at 18 students. Uh, that's been bumped up. And we try and convince the instructors, let me push it up to 24. That's casual uh, operation. That was uh, advised by an advisory board that our students needed experience. So they're doing uh, point of sales. They'll ask you what you're interested in. You have an option of two different entrees. So you tell them, they take the order, come out in real world, uh, if you will, kind of like, those are just like stay in hotels, get the hotel restaurant uh, doing that. But we're gonna do psychic. It's not gonna be static. The chef saying, well, none of the other restaurants change the menu. So we're changing the menu, do it. So, do as I say. So that's, they we're excited about that. Uh, second floor is now the baking floor. Uh, you'll see the two pastry labs. Uh, State-of-the-art equipment, you can see in there, nice and shiny. Uh, Dr. Lawson said, no, get it. We went out and got it. She gives a, uh, uh, again, we can't thank her enough for it. Where did the display case come from? Well, uh, so you saw the little display case where we were storing the, uh, that is a special order from Italy. Uh, oh, it wow. has the capabilities of being either a temperature, warm temperature, if you will, room temperature for those desserts that don't have to be refrigerated. But when the baking program goes into their refrigerated desserts, the cheesecakes, uh, the tarts, it turns into a refrigerated unit. Wow. So uh, we're hoping uh, to have that stocked now that we're getting into full face-to-face -face, so uh, the students be over there. Um, also that wish list we talked about, uh, we have a Really nice espresso machine coming in, so we'll be doing that. Um, it's crazy what they're charging, and of course with uh, COVID, uh, back order, so we're waiting on that. It's on a wish list coming, but it is coming. So we'll have those. Uh, along with that, uh, the students, the baking pastry arts program, the way we set it up is um, our pastry chef, Chef De La Fuente, has been working for a year to develop a signature sourdough bread for our program. She's got it ready, so the students will start rolling that, so we will have a St. Philip's sourdough bread specific as grown for her. Uh, so that's really exciting. Uh, part of what we do is we have an exchange program with the, the French uh, school, uh, the William Gourmet School, uh, that we take students over there, and they have a phenomenal signature uh, sourdough bread. We brought the idea back and Chef ran with it, so we're doing that. Uh, and they will be sending another group. We're going back face to face. We normally uh, would have to go out and recruit students for that. Uh, normally we would get between 10 and 12 applications. This time around, Chef got 60 applications for 15 slots. So, so we're definitely uh, looking at doing that. So, and then they return and come visit us in uh, April. So they get to see what we do here, and uh, it's a great program. Uh, we also have gone, uh, sent a group to Colombia doing that, and uh, Chef Costello has also gone to Brazil, and they're in talks of bringing us back to do that. So uh, really exciting times for us. Uh, they want to see our students. And then with the UNESCO project, we'll be increasing those things too. So uh, we're expanding internationally also. So. Uh, third floor, we'll be really, really excited about that. Uh, our hospitality and hotel program has a dedicated hospitality classroom that has a mock front office in there. So if you know the front office, our students get to go to the front office. We have a software system called Inroads, I-N-N Roads. Uh, it's uh, a 700 room hotel that the students take bookings for, cancellations, and we throw a scenario, we ask the student to be the angry customer, and <laughs> at which point they reach down, and go, would you like some water? So, uh, so that's great, I mean, that's very real world. They're actually getting uh, hands-on experience. And then our faculty member, Mr. Minsky, is on, I think last count was like 10 different boards with the hospitality industry. Uh, so they come in and they're starting, of course, right now, the hospitality industry is recruiting heavily. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's this minimum wage, starting wage, they're asking, and offering uh, above the fifteen dollar an hour, so we're we're looking at if uh, we can get them out there, they'll come get them. And we we currently are sitting at a ninety five percent employment rate of our practicum students, if you will, graduate. And the only reason that's not one hundred percent is we do have some hobbyists. You know, someone's just coming; they want to get the degree because they like to cook. So, but you're not helping my numbers. But okay, <laughs> we understand. <laughs> So as long as I can explain it, we're good. So uh, that's on the third floor. Fourth floor is uh, our grand champion, if you will, our diamond and 
in our in our bag as Artemisias. Uh, I won't. Uh, I can't give it justice. You'll see pictures up here. Uh, the day you get a nice view of the San Antonio skyline at night is phenomenal. So I'm really excited to be uh, able to say that we're going to have uh, dinner service in the fall on Wednesday, Thursday night, Thursday night, so, uh, and possibly one or two on a Wednesday night with our first year students once they get acclimated and ready to do that. So uh, we'll start offering dinner services again. Again, we're back face to face, and all I can say is we're back. So, <laughs> But uh, also up there, you'll, you'll have the great uh, view of what um, our hotel students and our students are getting real world industry. Uh, we have uh, the capability up there, we call them air walls. If you've seen a hotel on the conferences, uh, they can make this massive room. So we can break it down into three classrooms of uh, 35 plus, I think we could do 40 in there. Uh, and then we could change it to two rooms, and uh, we now have the great capability. I think we're coming back with our special event for Dr. Lawson, at, at which point um, we will be able to handle a service for 144 people in the large uh, 18 rounds and doing that. So we have the capability. We have, again, if we're trying to become the center of all things hospitality, you'll be able to see that today when you get up there, to see the lunches, you'll see the room set up in that large banquet set up. So um, students get the real walk. And look at that image, Dr. Ross even got us a lot. That's the 1898, one before it's good. Again, you'll see that it's set up upstairs. Uh, I don't know how much time I have. I could talk all day about it. all our stuff. <laughs> I tried to watch you because I think they're ready to go. Okay. <laughs> no, but we had, you didn't even tell them. This is the, what is this called? It's a oh, cooktop. Duct -tip cook -tip, duct -tip cook -tip, so it can be running, it runs off a magnet, it makes the molecules in a special metal yeah. vibrate, and it's got a quick recovery, it's got a built-in vent system. So uh, until they invent smell-o-vision, we have it all here. <laughs> okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you, Chef. Thank you, thank you all very much. And Master Chef as well, right? Most of our chef is our master chef. Uh, for, we've got, uh, I am a certified chef de cuisine, uh, which meant at a time, uh, my job, I'm a graduate of the program, and I got to brag on that. We put out great students. I was hired as a corporate chef for Campbell's Soup, as an R&D chef for Pace Foods, uh, but I was trained so well that I did the Pace so well, uh, and those of you that don't know, Campbell's Soup has a portfolio of Elastic Pickles, Pepperidge Farm, Franco American, and some other products. So they added that to my duties uh, doing that, and I was increasing sales. So um, I am a certified chef de cuisine. Uh, our chef de la Fuente is a certified executive uh, pastry chef through the American Culinary Federation, and then uh, all of our chefs got certified culinarians, which is what our graduates come out with, a certified culinarian. What that does is it shows an executive chef out in the world, that they don't have to hold your hand, and pretty much when they see St. Philip's grads, they know it's straight, uh, so we don't have that problem out. And, we'll and one more thing about the program, what keeps us with our exemplary status is that the C students, you all know when you went to school and you got a C, and you thank the Lord for getting out of the class, they don't let them out. It ain't Only the A and B students are exiting the program. Be your better program. Be your better. <laughs> so we're very excited about that, and we thank you for our benefactors for this room, as he shared, the refrigerator, the freezer, the ovens. They ask for everything. And so one of the things that the president said to everybody in culinary, tourism, and hospitality is that for the next 20 years, you cannot complain about anything. <laughs> So we have lunch for you prepared upstairs, but if you visit the different floors, he share with you those floors. I look out over the audience and I see one person that tied it all together because she said, I trained on all of them. I was their work study student. Martha Trevino, she said, I knew Ms. Bowden, I knew Ms. William Allen Hudgens, and I knew Dr. Lawrence, she knew them all. <laughs> she, but she does uh, work with work study students, putting them out in the community. So if you have an opportunity for one of our students in the community, go see this lady. Raise your hand, there you go, okay. And thank you to Patricia Mocha, a graduate of St. Philip's College. She is one that kind of, she's with Mocha and overseeing how we're spending all of our bond money. So we're very excited about the role that she plays. In addition to all of the other consultants and the contractors and uh, architects, everybody, but she also, I want to acknowledge her because she's a product of St. Philip's. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you for being with us. Thanks again to the St. Philip's College family.